Greetings, my friends. It is I, the Great One himself, Cynical Libertarian Society, C-Y-N-L-I-B-S-O-C.com on the interwebs, here with an anarchy moment. <clears throat> Finishing up my coffee after having had breakfast. Lovely mixture of broccoli, onions, and bacon on top of a bed of butter leaf lettuce and tomato. Tomato bought from the farmer's market. It was delicious. A couple of things on my mind. Only a couple, because that's all my brain can handle. I'm still a little... If you listened to the previous edition of Stating the Obvious, which I think is 198, and I'm closing out on episode 200. I don't know if I'm going to do something special for episode 200 or what. Got to think about that. In the previous edition of Stating the Obvious, I talked about how I was in a bad state because of a missed opportunity, and it it was nothing major, by the way. It's not like some earth-shattering shit. But it was one of those things where you recognize, you know, if you're not a statist and you take responsibility for your life, where you recognize you could have done better and you really fucked up, and you're pissed off about it because of the missed opportunity. And it reminds me of one of the very important things I learned when I was in the military. For those of you new to the podcast, I was in the military. I was in a light infantry unit. So yes, I have been trained by the government to kill people, which is odd because the government says you're not supposed to kill people. That's why killing people is illegal. And if you kill people, you go to jail. Unless, of course, you kill them for the government because when you're killing for the slave master... It's okay. Anyhow, I have been trained by the government to kill people. And when the government was killing us, to, was killing us. When the government was killing us to kill people, when the government was training us to kill people, our platoon leader, our lieutenant, our first platoon leader, we had three of them. Two of them were really good. One of them was a moron. I've told lots of stories about this in the past. If you go listen to past episodes, you can hear them. Lieutenant Cochran said something that has stuck with me over all these years. Stuck with me over all these years. Yes, my, I, I'm an idiot. I didn't do vocal warm-ups. And that was his little saying that comfort kills. And what he means by that, what he meant by that in the military context is we were a commando unit, light infantry, commando, rapid deployment force. Our main mission was to operate behind enemy lines. And the things that we would do is we were specifically trained to do raids, ambushes, and snatches. And snatch doesn't mean the kind of snatch you're thinking about between a woman's legs. Although we certainly thought about that a lot. So we would go behind enemy lines. Typically we'd be dropped off by helicopters. And we would do a raid, we'd you know, attack an enemy outpost or something like that and raid them, or we'd do an ambush, we'd set up and wait for people to walk by and we'd ambush them, or we'd do a snatch. A snatch is where you snatch a person or an object. You know, you go into an enemy base and you capture the general, or you go in and you steal the their laptop that has all their secrets on it nowadays. And so for us in that context, if we're behind enemy lines and thus surrounded by the enemy on all sides. If we became too comfortable, we would become complacent. You'd stop being hyper aware of your surroundings and the enemy could come up, sneak up on you and kill you. So you couldn't allow yourself to become too comfortable because you would end up dead. And this concept applies across the spectrum into life. Wherever you are in your life, And again, I think you'll see that this is an obvious difference between the hardcore statist and the anarcho-capitalist. The statist is completely comfortable with where they are. As I've talked about for the four previous episodes of Stating the Obvious, the statist is driven by fear. 
and their fear is alleviated by the state because the statist is afraid there will be no roads so the state makes roads and the statist is afraid they will get killed and raped so there's the police you know and the statist is afraid that they won't have any money and then retire so there's social security blah 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 right all the fears the statist has are provided for by the state And so the statist becomes comfortable with their life the way it is. The statist is quite comfortable believing that the police are protecting him from criminals and that the government builds the roads and that social security will be there when he gets old and that minimum wage and that unemployment insurance and that Obamacare and that TSA and that all of these things, the education system, that all of these things are working to provide for his well-being and his comfort. And the statist in becoming comfortable in his existence as a slave stops striving for anything greater. I've talked before about how technology, science, the advance of these things has come to a fucking standstill. I mean, what do we have that's new? What new discoveries and inventions are there? People say, well, the new iPhone came out and it's thinner. No, an, an iPhone, it's just a telephone. Telephones were invented how long ago? It's, it's nothing new. I mean, we're still... Back in the day when I walked uphill, right? When I, by the year 2000, we're going to have jet packs and we'll have flying cars and all this other stuff. Where is all of this stuff? None of this stuff exists... Not because it's impossible to make a jetpack. I've seen them. They exist. Not that it's impossible to make a flying car. It might be difficult. It's not impossible. It's because people are perfectly... Sheeple, I should say. Are perfectly comfortable with exactly the way things are. They've lost... The comfort that they feel has destroyed any striving they have to move forward. And of course, the solution to this is to not be comfortable. My missed opportunity made me uncomfortable. And I'm pissed off about it. So now, because I can't wait for Obama to fix it for me, I can't wait for Obama to pass a fucking law because he's the Messiah, I have to do something about it myself. I'm uncomfortable. I have to fix it. And this is what pushes people forward. The opposite of comfort kills, which it does, you look at the statist all around you. They're dying, and they're too stupid to know it. Their lives are worthless. They're empty, hollow, shallow pieces of shit. They can't think for themselves. They can't provide for themselves. They can't do for themselves. They're fear-driven, and the government, the state, rather, not just the government, the state, provides the comfort for them that quells their fears. We anarcho-capitalists, we are not comfortable at all. We are very uncomfortable because we see... Not just the problems around us, not just the things that are going wrong, but we see the opportunities to make things better. We see, in fact, how the state, as I've talked about ad nauseum and how other NCAPs have talked about ad nauseum, how the state, through the welfare system, perpetuates poverty, not solving it. How the state, through the police industrial complex, the prison industrial complex, and the justice industrial complex, perpetuates crime. It doesn't solve it. We are very uncomfortable. And being uncomfortable is what creates opportunities. 
Because when you're uncomfortable about your situation, when you're uncomfortable with the world around you, when things are pissing you off, that's when you pull your head out of your ass and you say, I'm fucking pissed off about this. I'm going to change it. The statist will never make the world a better place in any tangible sense because they're too comfortable. They don't want things to change. They don't want, they certainly don't want things to get better. The only hope, <clears throat> excuse me, my voice cut out for a minute there. The only hope, to use Obama's favorite word, Hope. Uh, can't believe I said that. The only hope. The only opportunity the human species has to move forward is the uncomfort and the dissatisfaction of the anarcho-capitalist. 